Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name's Jade, and this is How to App on iOS. And we've got another one of the Wart series happening today. Episode number 16 on Danger and Risk. I hope you're all doing well today. Let's talk danger and risk. There is a poll for you guys to uh, play around with if you'd like to. It's not necessary. The outcome doesn't really mean much either. But it's something to do, isn't it? Shall we begin? Rock and roll has, has always and always will be about being dangerous. It's a risk taker's playground. The early days of rock and roll were plagued by the insinuation of being the devil's music. People who actually dared to take the risk to play rock and roll were chastised and classed as devil worshippers. Because rock and roll has always dared to be different. And I don't just mean it being a style of music. Because many treat it as a lifestyle. And who's to say where this negative connotation came from? Could it be the typical stereotypical racist class of beings that we are because rock and roll de derived from those seedy underground clubs where colored folk dared to be different. Did this terrible connotation that rock and roll got did it derive from there was it because of racist attitudes in the beginning hard to tell really but looking back throughout our history most negative stuff stems from that racism unacceptance the inability to see the you the unusual or unique as something to be celebrated instead of chastised. I digress. Rock and roll was dangerous because it was enjoyable to play. It was enjoyable to listen to. It allowed those, and still does allow those, playing it and listening to it, the chance to let their hair down. And just be. And just be yourself. Without the fear of being judged. Because it's rock and roll, man. It's dangerous. Throughout history, rock and roll has been associated with stuff like Gambling, sex, and drugs. We've all heard the term repeatedly. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Is there a correlation? We'll talk about that further as we get into this show. 
Because is it really about sex and drugs and gambling? Because if I'm correct here, and I'm pretty sure I am, sex and drugs and rock and roll, well, sex and drugs and gambling existed way before rock and roll. The real gambling is taking a chance to be yourself and playing rock and roll or playing whatever style you want to call it because it doesn't matter what you call it, it's music. Playing music, listening to music that you'd like is the dangerous part. Yeah? Why? Because it makes you happy and that's the most important thing. And that's... Why music, rock and roll, is classed as dangerous because people get, tend to get upset when they see other people happy. And music makes us happy. But over the decades, music has become incredibly fucking boring. Especially the last two decades. The danger and the risks once taken have been replaced with product placement and short videos made for goldfish unable to focus on anything genuine for more than three seconds. But there's still plenty of eyes and ears that are desperate to attach themselves to the artists who dare to be dangerous and take risks. To take the leap of faith and bear their creative souls. Because there will always be a large amount of people wanting to genuinely connect through art. So I ask you to type in the chat, those who are here today, what's the most dangerous thing you've ever done? Feel free to write it in the chat. Now, you know what? It doesn't have to be music. It doesn't have to be, it can be whatever you want. What, in your opinion? comes to the first thing into your mind in the chat. What is the most dangerous thing you've done? Think about it, write it in the chat, and I'll call it out. I'll tell you what mine was. I'll give you two of them. I'll give you one that is uh, where I'm going to lead into next. Jumping out of a plane. That was dangerous for me. The other one was uh, going to see Vanilla Ice perform live and wearing a carcass t-shirt and getting to meet Vanilla Ice backstage. That was dangerous. <laughs> Let me bring up some of these comments. <laughs> if I can bring up comments today. Um, Doug Kidder says... Living on this planet, <laughs> that's dangerous. Absolutely, with the current state of the world. Absolutely. Fly gliders across the country, says Gregory O'Sullivan. Panda Get says, being born. How do you know? Do you remember that? I don't remember that. You've got a good memory, Panda Get. Sam Borthwick says, I once drove a golf cart backwards over a cliff. Not on purpose, I should stress. So, involuntary danger. Not a box says, I lived without a home. 
without health insurance, without the government for nearly two and a half years just living from street music. Absolutely dangerous. Thomas Christ, probably driving home from school on, a, on, on windy back roads at 80 plus miles per hour. Joe Glenn says, sold up and hit the road in a combi panel van. There you go. Kev Hart was a bouncer at a, a populated nightclub by farmer's wives fucking nightmare. True story. <laughs> Welton Kinder, thinking for myself and overcoming fears. It's dangerous. Being born is, yeah, being born is dangerous. You never know what could go wrong. It's out of your control. Gary Hubbs risk, uh, is taking a risk watching this at work, but whatevs. Oh, bullshit, Gary. You do it every day. You would have been sacked millions of times over. <laughs> uh, Doug Kidder says, I used to kayak class for rivers. There you go. You know what? And here's the thing. Doesn't have to be jumping out of planes and and skydiving and doing all these crazy things to uh, get your adrenaline up. This show isn't about that. I'm not suggesting that you you actually go out there and do these crazy things to confront these, you know, and be dangerous. Audible video says confronting real racists, not you, Russ. I'm sure Russ, if he was here, would respond uh, with dealing with audible video. Uh, Auntie G says, uh, traveling to Egypt with $10 USD in my pocket. It might not be dangerous, it may be stupid. Same thing. Um, Darren Anderson says, not playing the gambler at PNS Ball. <laughs> oh my God, that's funny. Um... <laughs> Brad example, I guess taking all my clothes off in front of big crowds and doing whole shows naked is a little dangerous. I could have tripped. <laughs> so when I talk about danger, I, I don't mean jumping out of planes, you know, because music is about danger. And I, I think it's what's lacking these days in modern music. The risks. There's, in my opinion, and it's just my opinion, folks. In the last 20 years, there doesn't seem to be these artists and bands that stick out to me as, wow, that person's unique, that, that, that band's unique. They're so creative. They're so interesting. There's nobody that sticks out to me. Everything seems to be product placement focused and, and quick and easy. And I mean, we've, and, and this type of music has been around forever, right? We've had these pre-manufactured artists, even, and this is going to be controversial, even as far back as Elvis Presley. So speaking of which, what I want to do now is uh, put some video up on the screen and talk about this. And while I'm doing it, Enjoy the images and feel free to type in the chat who you think these artists are that I'm putting up on the screen. Because we're going to take a look at some of the artists that I believe and history has proven through their staying power are risk takers, are artists who've been dangerous and not necessarily for their style of music. Just for being themselves. Yeah? So enjoy. See if you can guess who they are in the chat. The thing is with 
incredible artists that remain in our memories and, and why they mean so much to us is not so much because they were so different or so unique or so different than us. It's because they were themselves, unapologetically. They just put themselves out there and didn't care what people think. And that appeals to people. That's, that's what gives artists staying power. Not product placement. Not, uh, you know, who's, who they've signed to, what guitar strings they're using, what they mean, how they connect with you. Because they're, them being unapologetically open and honest and, and it connects with people because they're being dangerous. In a world where people shelter their, who they are, hide on Facebook, that's where we're at now, portray these images of bright and happy souls. It's the people who wrote the music that let you know exactly how they're feeling. And heading back to drugs and alcohol and danger, have a look at how many artists on this list you can actually assign drug usage to. It's interesting that there are a lot of artists that stick out to us that have been heavily into drugs. It goes back to the beginning of what I talked about. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And it's about backing yourself too. These artists back themselves. They believe in it. They've got a product they believe in. They, they, it's not even a product. It's just who they are. They just make music. Look at that guy right there. I don't know if he really made good music, but God, was he original. These artists embrace the quirky, they embrace the awkward, they embrace the pain, the, the, the sadness, the joy, all the stuff that makes an artist incredible. They take risks. They don't hold nothing back. And when there's so many people who are afraid to express themselves in this world, afraid of what other people are going to think of them, we need music like this. We need people to be dangerous and, and walk the line and take the risks to expose themselves to let us know that it's okay to do that. You know, it's okay to write about uncomfortable topics things that make you squirm because they won't be uncomfortable for everybody and you know what there's nothing wrong with feeling uncomfortable I don't know if it's just where we're at right now but it seems like if you say something that makes people feel uncomfortable you get demonized for it when we all know you <laughs> It's a part of life. It's about feeling uncomfortable. We all do it. It's about being authentic. That is another thing that stands out with all of these artists. Authenticity. Authenticity. Every one of them. But there's a price to pay with this authenticity because we take as consumers we take we take and we take and we want more from them and we want more and more because we can't get enough and it's a burden on the artist or the band And it has catastrophic things happen that we lose them early. We take risks every single day in our lives just by walking out the door. Yeah?
So why not with our music? And what Audible just wrote there is where I'm heading next. If you're going to be an artist, and let me just stop, because there's a reason I've put myself there at the end. Not, and I need to explain this, I'll come back to this here. The reason I put myself at the end there is not because I put myself in anywhere near the echelon of any of those artists. But all through my music making, I refuse to be another carbon copy. I refuse. It's not, it's not in my nature. And I don't go out of my way to be different. I just go out of my way to be as honest as I can. So heading back to this, Audible Video wrote here, if you're going to be an artist, you have to speak the truth. Otherwise, you're just trying to be popular. And people see through bullshit. Not everybody. There are some people who can't see through bullshit. <laughs> That's why pyramid schemes exist, unfortunately. <laughs> um... But it's true. The, the common thread with all of those artists definitely is their authenticity. And I, I know, folks, there's plenty of artists I missed out in there. So many. So many. So that was just a smattering. And, and I know some people uh, probably missed a lot of them there. Uh, because I did try and throw in some curveballs. And even in the last 20 years, there has been an amount of artists that have stood out as unique and risk takers. One of them, which I probably should have put on there from the last decade, is Lady Gaga. But apart from her, it's really hard for me to actually think of many others that have the balls I guess to challenge the status quo be dangerous continually conform uh, continually change be something that you wouldn't expect and you know talking about this today I don't I'm not I'm not trying to encourage anyone here to push themselves to create music that they don't like the point of this is being dangerous is not harming yourself. Like, I look at danger in music as challenging your listeners, challenging yourself to be better, challenging yourself to be as open, as brutally honest as possible. And you know what? It's not always going to work. You're going to fail. But like I say on the show all the time, mistakes make you better. But taking risks and attempting to be as dangerous as possible more than not will have a good outcome. See, I left Elvis out of the list, and I'll tell you why. Because he's one of the original manufactured artists. He's one of the original Kylie Minogue, Rick Astley, and the Beatles as well. I struggled with putting the Beatles on there because in the early days, I don't know, there was a bit of that there too. But then they found themselves, and again, through drugs. <laughs> it's, it's interesting that drugs always seem to play a part out of all those artists that we looked through then 
there's only a very small percentage that weren't heavy drug users, interestingly enough. And the most bizarre out of them was the one who took nothing, which was Frank Zappa. The guy smoked cigarettes and drank coffee. And he was possibly one of the most unapologetically dangerous, risk-taking, unique artists of all time. Thomas Christ writes here, part of the problem is you can't really shock anyone anymore. It's all been done. But it's not about shocking people. This is, this is the difference between what I'm trying to say today. Danger. I'm not trying to get people to shock. Uh, shocking people is not the way to do it. Shocking people is almost as lasting as uh, product placement. Yeah? It's only going to get you so far. There has to be substance behind... You know, there's a cause and effect. If you're going to do something, if you're going to risk something, it can't just be for shock and awe because it's not going to last. Yeah. Trying something different isn't selling out once you sell art you're a sellout and you shouldn't be made to feel bad about selling your art people confuse changing things up with selling out Unless you're talking about Metallica and uh, the Saint Anger album. There's a great example of a band utterly conforming and trying to be something that they're not and falling flat on their face completely, looking like a bunch of dickheads. It's possibly the biggest fail in music history. The Metallica Saint Anger album. Trying to be Meshuga and ending up putting out an absolute turkey. Not being true to themselves. Thinking that they're being dangerous. Thinking that they're doing something utterly different and they're, they're going to change everything up. And in the end, they did something that totally sucked because they weren't being true to themselves at all. The rewards that come from risk don't always happen unless the risk that you're taking is genuine. You can't, you can't manufacture risk. Yeah, you can't manufacture being dangerous. You can't manufacture the things that you love, because people see through it. Let's get back to that. People see through bullshit. So I've set up a poll today. <laughs> Just curious to see what people say on there. So if you haven't filled in the poll, do so now. I'll give you a minute or so to uh, hit yes, no, or sometimes. Please do. It's all right. I'm not collecting your information and going to use it against you in the future. But... uh. Feel free to do so. I'm going to end the poll in a sec. Let's let's just uh, pull it down. There it is. I'm interested to see uh, what it is. All right, let's end it. So, our poll for the day was... I can't remember the question. <laughs> do you consider yourself a risk taker? Sometimes, yes or no. Sometimes, 45%. Now, I didn't specify with that question if it was, 
to do with music. That's up to you if you think you're a risk taker. Because you may be a risk taker with your music, but in everyday life, absolutely not. And that, that's entirely a sen probably a sensible thing to do. <laughs> because uh, you've got to survive and do the things, you know, to be able to make the music. So thank you all for the 33 of you who voted. It's very kind of you. Um, no, 15%. I'm happy to see that. I'm happy to see it's a very small amount of people because, again, why I wanted to talk about this is I care about all of you people, all, all of you, all you warts. I don't want to say all you people. It sounds disgusting. All of you warts who are uh, make music. And I want to see everybody make the best music they possibly can. And I do appreciate uh, the amount of honesty that I see in the music across all these communities here on YouTube. And it's a good thing. I think uh, it, it's always going to drive more engagement with your music, being a risk taker and, and, and being honest and, and confronting things in your songs than trying to get clicks and doing all the the uh the analytics and all the the bullshit that uh, everyone's so focused on these days with music you know the the music industry seems so hooked on product placement and clicks and all of these things yeah where they seem to have lost their way because uh, i don't see many uh bob dylan's frank zappa's gg allen's it's probably a good thing there's no gg allen and look taking risks with your music is far healthier than taking risks with gambling actual real gambling and ultimately the amount of risk that you take with your music is entirely up to you you're not disclosing how much you're risking. And as long as it, it's not going to put you homeless or anything like that, it's a positive risk to take with your music. If you decide to create a song that's completely open and talking about a subject that is really hard to talk about, it may fall flat on its face. Or it may not. But you don't know unless you take the risk, unless you are dangerous. I miss danger in music. I t utterly miss danger in music. I grew up in, I feel like many of you here, like myself, grew up in a time where even in the 80s, man, electronic, all this electronic music came out and it was all totally different and people thought it was going to be the end of rock and roll and, and everything was going to be shit. And in fact, a lot of the music that was created through that decade has stuck with us for some reason. What is that reason? Look at, look at artists like Boy George, yeah? Who would have thought? In the 80s, Boy George was this gender-bending artist, completely out of left of field, and everybody just went for it. Everybody was all in, all the chips in. This guy was amazing. And here we are in 2022, where everybody's so scared about gender and... It's such a hot topic. But back in the 80s, this guy was like an absolute fucking trailblazer. Just throwing it out there. Didn't give a shit. And everybody just lapped it up. And these days, have we gone backwards? Is, is, have we gone... Uh, is, is everything too conservative with music? It feels like it to me. Everything feels so conservative and, and, and uh, like... The walls are closing. Like you can't actually express yourself, even to the point of making comments on, on things. It's, it's, it's quite uh, odd where we're at. So what I'm going to do is uh, just flick back through the, the video. And rattle off who some of these artists were. Because I saw some people get them wrong. Boy George, of course, the gender-bending 
original. Kiss. Is Gene Simmons a nut job these days? Yes, of course. Is he a predator? Yes, of course. But again, what they did was groundbreaking. Björk. I mean, I, I, one of the first images I think of when I think of Björk is her at an airport wanting to punch somebody's face in. Ozzy Osbourne. Who knows what the real story is? Did he bite the head off an animal? Metallica. These dudes changed rock and roll. They, they morphed rock and roll into something else. They, they became the thing. The Doors. Drugs. I mean, this, this band took poetry and blended it with music to something utterly like that you wouldn't expect. What can you say about this woman? Hmm. Incredible voice. Bold. Prince. Holy shit. Incredible artist. Absolutely. It's like really short too. I met him in Melbourne. Queen. I want to break free. Here's a guy dressing up as a woman in a video clip with a vacuum cleaner. Way before Boy George. Pushing boundaries. Frank Zappa. The guy was so dangerous, he took on the entire fucking... In he took on the PMRC before he died. It was one of the last things that he did. Pink Floyd. I don't even need words. G.G. Allen, this is. This guy was so out there. His music was shit. And he actually used to shit in his own hands at live gigs and run amongst the crowd and rub his own feces into audience members. And they went back. The Beatles. Drugs was when they really fired on all cylinders. What can you say about this guy? He, he was playing gigs... Bef just before he died they had to like walk him out with a walking frame the sex pistols man the sex pistols they pretty much said fuck the queen they said fuck everything were they awesome as musicians <laughs> not really <laughs> madonna has be was a juggernaut an absolute juggernaut she did everything her own way and told everybody else around her to fuck off Slayer, one of the most true to themselves band in the world, have stuck to their guns 100%, never changed. Lou Reed. Now, there's some at the end that you may not know. Radiohead. I mean, there's not too many people who don't own a Radiohead album. There's something about this wonky-eyed singer that just screams, you know, connection. Alice Cooper, look at this guy. This guy's still doing shows and absolutely slaying it live. He's amazing. It, it, he just gets better and better. Here's a fine example of, like, people taking so much that this particular artist took his own life. Draining. Whether you like this dude or not. A massive impact. In a time when music was boring as fuck. Fleetwood Mac. Every one of these performers, bands. Cindy Lauper. Take no shit. Take no prisoners. Be who you are. Do what you do. Say what you say. Bob Dylan. I can't stand his voice, but you got to respect it. What he's done. How he's cemented himself. Primus.
Jimi Hendrix. Drugs. <laughs> Mr. Bungle. Absolutely one of the most unique and out there bands I've ever seen. So, I guess what I'm trying to say today, and I'll reiterate it, is what I say at the end of every episode. Do the things that make you happy. Mistakes make you better. And we all rise together. Because it's about being a risk taker, being dangerous, not being afraid to be who you are, not being afraid to take who you are and dump it into what you create. You can't force unique. You can see through forced unique. We're all unique. And it doesn't take jumping out of an aeroplane, bungee jumping in New Zealand to live a life of risk and danger. We're in a world where people are increasingly afraid to be themselves, afraid what others will think of them. Social media driven by images and selfies uh, with uh, apps that smooth skin and, and make sure we look our best at all times. Because God forbid if people see us at our worst, As artists, we have the absolute opportunity to connect with people on a level that mere talking will never achieve. Music has always broken down barriers. Music brings people together. And as a creator, you owe it to yourself. To take a risk and be as dangerous as possible without hurting yourself. So take drugs. Not in abundance. <laughs> Get naked on stage. Tell people how you're feeling. Write crazy lyrics like FMC. Shock people if you need to. Do what it takes to get that creativity out on the plate. Like a chef. Serve it up to people. Give them something to chew on and think about. Because the real risk is not taking a risk. And always thinking what could have been. So if you're thinking about putting money in a poker machine after this, keep it in your pocket. If you're thinking about going and buying a Ferrari because you've just reached midlife crisis, put your credit card away. <laughs> but just be yourself, yeah? Do the things that make you happy. We all rise together. Risk and reward. It's up to you. Folks, thanks for joining me today on this little rant. And I've really pushed the limit today with my 99% too much talking. Today's music has been provided by Euclidean. And... For something different, I'm going to let you know the music that is being played in these tracks here. I normally don't let you know. I try and do a subliminal thing. So let's do it. The first track here we have is Danger Zone.
The second track here is The Gambler. The third track here is Poker Face. <laughs> the fourth track here is The Winner Takes It All. This is how I get around copyright, folks. <laughs> Subliminal messages. This track is... You can probably hear that now. <laughs> the Ace of Spades. This track is... I should be so lucky. We have The Luckiest by Ben Folds. And the final track here is what we're going to go out with today. So thank you all for being here. I hope you enjoyed these. Uh, we've got a, uh, I've got a uh, live stream this weekend, the opening hour, doing some more classic music. So hopefully you can join me for that. Uh, coming up next, in the next 10 minutes, there's a link at the top of the channel, at the chat there, to go over and head over to Cy Effin's channel. He's doing his first live stream, so let's all get over there and support him. And then after that will be YML at a special time. So you've got YML coming up in about an hour and 10 minutes time, and Cy Effin doing a show. And thank you guys for hanging out. And... Uh, making these wart episodes something interesting. I'm going to take this track that we have here and I'm going to expose what it is and we're going to go out with it for today. It probably doesn't sound like something you know, but you will in a second. So I'll see you later, folks. Enjoy. Taxi arrives, do not toot, the kids are still asleep, well maybe I am too, skip the coffee, try to sleep on the plane today, check my bag, have I packed what I will need, I'll see cause that's my preference, it keeps me separate from the people carrying way too much in the overhead, safety demonstration, hoping once again it won't be needed, it's a class structure on a tiny scale. Life will have its ups and downs And sometimes I complain about The things that I will choose to do And who it is that I can blame But when I see the other people Cold and sleeping in the rain I'm lucky to be flying today Flying today Flying today Yes, I'm lucky to be flying today 8am is when I land, it's time to plan My getaway, a big red bus will take me all the way Past some giant orange sticks Coffee time at last, I make it last Until I reach the comfort of my home Away from home To our meeting about that new thing That's impacting our sales generation capability Promoting synergy and shifting paradigms Is stressing me and making me wish that it was nearly time Start my journey home Life will often make me feel That expectations are unreal And deadlines that I have to hit Will make me think that I'm unfit But when I see the other people Begging for my change to eat I'm lucky to be flying today Flying today Flying today Yes, I'm lucky to be flying today. Yes, life will have its ups and downs, and sometimes I complain about the things that I will choose to do, and who it is that I can blame. But when I see the other people cold and sleeping in the rain, and wishing they could have my life, even for a single day, struggling to just keep
get by Asking for a reason why I just walk past them every time Hey buddy, can you spare a dime? I look away as if I find It just too hard to realise I'm lucky To be flying today Flying today Flying today Yes, I'm lucky To be flying a